Welcome to Printing Profits. I want you to think about the word investment for a sec. What comes to mind? Money? Of course. Business? Sure. Time and effort? Obviously. Making an investment means putting in the work to succeed in the future. And that's because the really great investments aren't just quick hits. They pay off in the long run. For Jeff from POD Insights, getting that long-term success has been a work in progress. He first started testing designs on online marketplaces like Merch by Amazon and Redbubble. And then in 2020, he opened his first Etsy shop working with text-based and free graphics. Soon, Jeff invested in different online tools to create unique designs and target those profitable niches. This included keyword research tools, design subscription services, and of course, Printify. His investments paid off, and by the end of 2021, he made his first $100,000. Now Jeff shares his journey online and teaches other entrepreneurs how to do the same. His channel, POD Insights, and podcast have become an important resource for many online, which is why I'm incredibly excited that we're getting to speak with him today. Hey, Jeff, thanks for joining us. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. So you started your print on demand journey um, selling for different platforms. Talk to me about where this entrepreneurial spirit came from and, and how that led you to POD. Yeah, sure. So back in 2020, I started really just thinking that I was needing an additional income stream and I was looking for a way to possibly at least tie one or two of my interests to to an additional income stream. And I'd always kind of been somebody that liked playing around with Photoshop, you know, yeah. a little bit of photography, making some designs. So when I stumbled across, uh, through my research, I stumbled across the idea of print on demand or being able to sell my designs on products online. That really appealed to me. Just the idea of, you know, creating designs that somebody else would want to buy, putting them on right. real products, but not having the barriers, the overhead, you know, the the traditional retail model that just so many people can't put up that financial investment or that time investment. Um, so having print on demand remove all those barriers really made it really appealing to me. And like you said, I started a few different channels online, but ultimately it was pretty, pretty quickly after the first couple of months, I landed solidly on Etsy being the best choice for me at the time. And that's pretty much what I've stuck with. What I love about um, your story is, you know, like a lot of other very successful POD merchants, when you first started, there's I'm, I saw a lot of trial and error what you did. You tried out with the different platforms, and then the big thing was like all these tools that you were working with. But speaking about the platforms in particular, I mean, you were on Merch by Amazon, you were on Redbubble. Um, what did you learn from selling in those spaces that? kind of helped you to see the most progress in yourself, I guess, when you went forward? I mean, because you, you tried so much. So was there a moment or was there an aspect of selling on these different spaces that I guess you say kind of took you the rest of the way? Yeah, I think what I what they helped me recognize was that I really, for me, it was a good fit to to sell on a platform that brought the existing traffic because mm -hmm. they all had that in common, right? They all were an existing marketplace. They were bringing customers to the platform and not having to stress out about that, about generating that traffic. It seemed like that was going to be a good fit for me, but, but creating listings for, uh, for like Redbubble and Merch by Amazon, um, there was a different element there because the competition levels are just different than they are on Etsy. You know, Etsy doesn't have the highest, you know, barrier to entry. It's certainly, very easy to get started and it's pretty low cost with uh, with their listing charges, but it's still a little bit, little bit more to get involved versus Merch by Amazon or Redbubble. Sure, yeah. And so the what I learned through working on Redbubble on Amazon was just that you really, really have to never stop doing your research on sub niches and looking mm -hmm. for more specific, uh, more specific design styles and ideas to try to find those ones that have the lower competition. And the thing is, they're, they're almost always there. It's sort of a misconception, I believe, that uh, even you know basic products like t-shirts, that there's too much competition or that right. things are oversaturated because there are always these sub-niche ideas. 
And yes, you might find a hundred thousand plus search results if you look on Amazon or Redbubble for a really general like parent niche. Mm -hmm. But when you start going down and and either combining niches, you know, cross niching things like that, um, you can almost always find some level of success. And then working on those in combination with Etsy is what made me realize like I think I can get more specific on Etsy more quickly. Mm. and still be found easily on Etsy because the traffic is there. You can still promote yourself on social media and things like that. It just seemed like Etsy's algorithms were a little bit more willing to promote some of the newer listings gotcha, yeah. and help you help you be found. It's one of those things I never, you know, it's not like you can have hard data backing that up other than when I went and tried to find some sub niches across all of these marketplaces, I would find a little bit of success here and there, Redbubble and and Merch by Amazon. But on Etsy, if I created some designs in a in a lower competition sub niche, I would find more sales yeah. uh, than on the other two. And it's I I honestly don't know if it was just a factor of uh, of Etsy's algorithm being more favorable to newer listings in yeah. those smaller niches, or if it was. Uh, simply because the competition levels on Amazon and Redbubble were higher, but they really, they really instilled in me that you can never stop. You can't, right. you, know, you, you can't stop searching for those, for those new design ideas. Even if, even if in your business, you focus in on one or two niches, I think just you're always going to have that level of competition in those marketplaces. And the trade, that's the trade-off, right? The trade-off is you get the existing traffic, you're not necessarily stressing about where do I get the traffic because it's there, mm -hmm. but being found in it is the challenge. And so I think it just seemed like Etsy was a, a good balance to me after working on those other platforms and seeing how it can be quite difficult to be found on those other platforms. And it absolutely can be done, Yeah, uh, but it's uh, it, it took a little bit less of a grind to me on Etsy compared to the other two. Well, it seemed like you kind of got the, the, you got the best of both worlds. I mean, you got a better algorithm that gives you that new listing boost. <clears throat> and then on the other hand, you have uh, this lower competition, which ironically just comes together to give you the boost that you were looking for. But when you talk about researching these niches constantly, mm -hmm. what, what, what is, what is, what does your research process look like? <clears throat> so one of the things that I have done uh, every, I try to do it once a week, every week. Mm -hmm. Um, and this is how I usually get started. And I don't always see something most, actually most of the time I don't see something that's worth it. And I end up having to go to, um, some of the tools that I've used to get some ideas, to get the ball rolling. Right. Um, but one of the things I do every week, at least once a week, usually on Sunday, when I have a little bit of free time is I'll go to Google trends mm. and I just look at the search for shirt or t-shirt because what it does is in the bottom right corner, I think it's still the bottom right corner. Yeah. It gives you suggested, you know, related phrases and they'll be long tail phrases. So right. it'll tell you people searched for, you know, blank, blank shirt. And I'll look at that trend in the U S for the last seven days. And I'll see in the last week, what, what shirts are people searching for? And like yeah. I said, three out of four weeks, there's nothing there, but one out of those four weeks, there'll be something I'm like, I'm going to look into that. Mm. I'm going to go on Etsy now and see if there are shirts with this design on it. Interesting, yeah. And sometimes there's already 100 pages of search results. Sometimes I've actually found a couple of, you know, shirts that were um, relatively short-term trends, but yeah. still shirts that I was able to make sales on. But usually what, I, what that leads me to do is I'll start finding those sub niches through some of those higher level things that people search for on Google. Because obviously when Google tells you the top five or top 10, they're like super high search volume, yeah, which, which, which means they probably are going to have some competition, but that leads me down the road of, all right, well, let's, let's look at what might be related to that, but go a step deeper or connect that with another niche. And one of the things that I like to do from, from that step forward is, uh, there are a couple of research tools out there that I use. Sales Samurai is one of my favorites yeah. because, because they have a Chrome extension that I really like. And sometimes this is one of those, um, a lot of people will have differing opinions on whether these, whether these things are financially worth it. But mm. for me, honestly, the price of admission for sales samurai is, is lower. Um, especially if you get a coupon code for it yeah. is lower than a lot of other tools out there. And for me, the Chrome extension, it makes it worth it. Even if you don't 
take advantage of a lot of the other features that are built into the site. Yeah. Um, having a tool that, that pops out a Chrome extension that shows me related, like hundreds of related search phrases for what I searched for on Etsy with the estimated search volume and the competition level already listed out, that saves me so much time. And that's usually the next step in my process is let me just let that tool tell me what are all the related phrases mm. uh, and you can filter it and change it around multiple different ways. And that's usually how I end up finding sub niche ideas is yeah. oh, there's a related phrase right there. It's got a lot of the same words, but it's a little different. And that one only has, you know, a thousand search results instead of a hundred thousand. I mean, this was my next question actually, is that, you know, the topic of this show is about investing in the long run. Mm -hmm. And what I love about your story is that in the beginning, you spent time testing out these different tools, uh, testing out their subscriber models, even if it was just a free trial in the beginning, just to see how it worked for you. And in the long run, you know, just like you just said, it, it did help you. I mean, after trying out so many tools, uh, you mentioned Sales Samurai. Give, give me like a, a starter pack for what a newbie to POD or a new store owner, like what should they have, you know, in the, in, in, in their mm -hmm. back pocket to say, okay, this is what I need to get my store started. This is sort of like the building blocks of where I should, what I should use to, to get my store off the ground. Yeah, it's a, that's a great question. And I actually, I need to update it, but I think it was maybe about a year ago. I made a video on, on the POD insights channel about free resources to get started. And I definitely recommend you check out uh, E-Rank. That's mm -hmm. uh, a, the Etsy research tool. They still have a free tier of the account. So it's a little bit limited. I think you can only do maybe it's like five searches per day or something like that uh, with the free account, but it's totally free. There's no like limited time period on it. I still log into it and check it once in a while. And, yeah. and, uh, and I just have the free tier of the account. Um, I absolutely recommend if there's something like that that's free, that you use, like, why wouldn't you use it sure. basically? Yeah. Um, and if it winds up being something that you find a lot of value in after you make some sales, then maybe you do go for one of the paid tiers of the accounts. But E-Rank is one that I highly recommend because it's just there and free and available. And it helps you identify the competition estimated search volume and um, place it is another one for mm -hmm. mockups where you know, some of the products on Printify, especially now, have very usable mockups, but there are some of the more specialty products that uh, the mockups will basically just be on a plain white background. And I prefer to always have context mockups whenever possible so that yeah. your design is seen in some context, um, especially for the primary thumbnail and search results. And Place It offers a free tier of account which again, it's going to have some limitations on it, but that's another one that it's there. It's free. You can get access to a rotating selection of mockups every month uh, without having to, to make any financial investment. And it can give you that differentiation of my mockups look at least a little different than some other sellers. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so that that's another one I highly recommend checking out for free, especially, you know, when you're new. And then if you evolve from there to create your own mockups, you know, if you order product samples and make your own mockups at home and do stuff like that, and you're investing a little bit financially, then that's great. But, uh, but it gets you something to start with. Also, I highly recommend using uh, Canva's free account as yeah, well definitely. for, sh uh, for shop graphics. Even if you're not, you know, using it to make your own mockups, you need to do some branding of sure. your shop's homepage, Absolutely, right? And yep. It also is a great tool for creating things like size charts. You can create really nice looking, you know, uh, listing graphics like size charts or the types of images where you're explaining the shipping process, those types of things that give your shop a nice cohesive look. Um, and again, that's a, a free, free tool. They have, a, of course, they have a paid tier of account, but it's something else you can take advantage of for free that, in my opinion, even though I, I'd used Photoshop for like, 15 years or something. Canva is on fast. And it's so fast. It's fast. Yeah. Right. That, that's the thing. I, I use Canva for a lot of those basic shop graphics because it's so fast and easy. Yeah. Um, so th those three right there, that's already like a powerful set of completely free things uh, that can give you a leg up and make your shop, you know, and your listings uh, have a little bit of that better appearance and also help you find some of those niches. Um, also, you know, obviously Google Trends is free as well. They, that can be a good starting point for some things. Uh, one of the things I really like using Google Trends for that helped me when I was new is planning out uh, throughout the year, planning your designs. Right. So I think it's really helpful with seasonal niches because 
you know the demand is going to be there. You don't necessarily need a tool to tell you that at a certain time of year, there's going to be a spike in sales of like mom and dad themed things, right? Because it's Mother's Day, Father's Day. So you know that that spike is coming, but you don't know exactly when it's coming. You don't know mm, when to expect Interesting. Yeah. the shopping, right? Yeah. You, you, you know when you personally shop for gifts for mom and dad around those holidays, but when does everybody else do it? Is it mid-April? Is it late April for Mother's Day? Uh, and so Google Trends can show, you know, the last five years of around how many weeks before the holiday was that spike in shopping. And then what you want to do is use that and go, okay, well, if it's four weeks before the holiday that the big spike in shopping happens, the search volume for Mother's Day shirt, Mother's Day mug, those phrases, if those all spike a certain number of weeks before the holiday, that's the time when your listings need to be there. Right. You don't want to be making them during that peak. You want them to already be there. Yeah. So Google Trends was another tool I really like to use just more for planning. It wasn't necessarily always to identify niches, but just look out even just for the next few months and see right. what do I need to be making when. So we've talked a lot about how Etsy, the, one of the benefits of it is that it comes in with this built-in audience. And of course, when we think about developing our audience long term, it's a great place to do that. But, you know, because you've tried so many marketplaces uh, Redbubble, Amazon, Shopify. Um, wh when you think about the long term for a new seller, is it worth just spending your time, in your opinion, just focusing on Etsy for that whole time, for that however long you want to run your business? Or do you think that there comes to a certain point where once you've grown on Etsy, you, you have to expand, you have to create that Shopify store or go elsewhere? Like, do you think it's better to just kind of commit to the one thing in the long run or to just, you know, eventually, yeah, expand out, create more? So it's an interesting question because I think everybody is in a slightly different scenario with how they start their business and then what their goals are. Obviously, see, you could say the same thing about, you know, success in general, success mm -hmm. for you and what it means for you doesn't have to mean making half a million dollars a year in sales. It could gotcha. mean mm -hmm. a little bit of extra income so you can take a vacation that you couldn't otherwise take. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing that you have to keep in mind for yourself is, just be honest with yourself about what is what does success look like for you? What are your goals for your business? Um, it's great to to say that and motivational to say that you can do anything, you know, like the sky's the limit. And and that's true to some yeah, extent, right? Sure. Because you you'll get into your you'll get out of it what you put into it. So if you keep putting into it, you'll keep getting more out of it. But at the same time, if for you it's more of a balance, like my goal is to make additional income, but not necessarily be the million dollar a year store, then it's going to look very different than, uh, than somebody who that is their goal. Their goal is this to be everything for them. Right. Um, and how far they go with it. But that being said, so that just that qualifier, if you're assuming that you do want to just keep expanding, I think it depends on what your strategy was with your first Etsy shop, because if you were like me and you started with a more general Etsy shop, my primary Etsy shop is still that way. It's still, I will make designs for as long as I don't have a personal reason why I don't want to make designs <laughs> in a specific niche. Yeah. Uh, there, I will go where the demand is. If I see demand, I will go there and I will make the designs for that niche. Uh, and so I get my sales mainly through the search results on yeah. Etsy, not primarily through people going to my shop's homepage. Right. Yes. So I've heard about this that like yeah. on Etsy, <laughs> it's not the the store page. You shop through that search bar, which is why at the end of the day, what really matters is is having your designs found, you know? Right. Exactly. So that's that's my strategy. So if I wanted to expand, if I get to that point where I'm like, you know what, I'm ready to take it to the next level. Yeah. I don't personally know that I would try to do what I'm doing on Etsy on my own website with a very general store because mm -hmm. I basically, if you say I'm competing with anybody that sells t-shirts in multiple across multiple niches, well, that's a lot of sites that, that are, have been around for a long time, right? You're competing against Amazon. Mm -hmm. Basically, if, if you're trying to be a very general website that sells all different kinds of designs, all different kinds of products, uh, and it can be hard for somebody just to remember you yeah. because you're so general, <laughs> exactly, right? Like, yeah. like it, it, you might get a little bit of an edge on the side of like, if you offer something for everybody, maybe somebody remembers that your site because it was easy to find a gift item or something like that. But uh, it, you don't get that same brand recognition as if you were a focused niche with a brand image, a brand message. Uh, I think that 
definitely works well on a standalone on your own website if you expanded to that. Mm -hmm. Whereas a more general store like what I have on Etsy, I don't know that that would translate well if I were to try and take it off of Etsy and just recreate it on my own site because I'd be competing with so many other online sellers yeah. without having a specific focus or something that makes me really memorable. Fair enough, yeah. So if that's how you started like me, then I think expanding might look like maybe just opening additional Etsy shops mm. that are a niche specific or even product specific. You know, you could do a shop that's literally just mugs <laughs> um, in addition to your original store, or you could go niche specific with a, an additional Etsy shop. Um, or you could always look at starting your own site in a specific niche as well, if you want to expand. So you have lots of options, but I think it just depends like, which option you go with might depend a little bit on how you got started. Because if the way you got started was a really specific brand niche with a great message and you build up a great following, that could translate over into your own site selling through, yeah. you know, your own website. But you got to make sure you have it. That's the thing. Right. Yeah, you right. got to have exactly. that guarantee. Well, yeah. hey, so, listen. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Please continue. Well, was, so, so it probably just, it's going to be a little different for everybody, but mm. the opportunities are there. I think no, no matter how you started, the opportunities are there. There are a lot of different directions you can go. It's just a matter of, uh, A, what what is success to you? What does it mean to you? Does it mean always expanding or does it mean getting to a certain level and and either just maybe expanding horizontally a little bit mm -hmm. onto Etsy, staying on Etsy and maybe opening a second shop or something? Or does it look like, uh, now I want to take this everywhere, right? Yeah. Well, hey, man, before I let you go, I mean, this whole thing that we've been talking about is uh, long-term success. Uh, you know, you've had some success, obviously, since you've started. That's why we're talking to you. But when you think about the future, what are some, you know, kind of markers that you've set yourself for things that you want to achieve in the future in your long term career path for the with this? <laughs> yes. So I do. Hmm. I know it's so a tough one. one. <laughs> it is a tough one. Yeah. I hate when people ask me the five-year plan question so I can understand you right now. It's like, oh, I'm just trying to figure this stuff out right now. <laughs> yeah, well, so one of the things I've realized in the last uh, couple of years is that I, I'm, really enjoying, uh, I'm really enjoying the POD Insights YouTube channel because of how rewarding it can be to, to feel like you're helping people when they comment on your videos, that, you know, like, thank you for showing me how to do this. It, it could be as simple as showing somebody how to set up the shipping profile and their, for their Etsy listings. Um, so I've been enjoying... I've, it's been rewarding working on the POD Insights channel. So one of my goals is to keep growing that channel so that uh, it can get greater visibility and hopefully help more print-on-demand sellers know those fundamental things that they need to know because uh, there are little details, you know, right, to like your strategy of selling internationally. Yeah, You need to, you need to step aside and think about that uh, before you actually create, you know, hundreds of shipping profiles without realizing it, not knowing where your orders could be uh, could be going. Uh, it's it's better, in my opinion, to take a step aside and think about those types of little details when you're getting started. And that's what a lot of my videos focus on. So I do want to grow the audience for my YouTube channel. Um, and so I commit a decent amount of time of, uh, to that every week. But for my print on demand business, primarily for me, it's about maintaining the scale of my of my primary store on Etsy mm. because the turnover of listings is one another thing you know you've always got listings that are expiring because they didn't sell and then you're trying to create your new listings to keep that level up so i basically am in more of a maintaining mode with my primary Etsy store but i have been looking into expanding into one or two additional Etsy stores Interesting. i don't i don't know that i'm going to you know, go heavy on the uh, creating my own website piece because it's it's uh, it's something that de it requires a lot of personal commitment yeah. of time and effort unless you can hire, you know, a few <laughs> people to help you out with it. Um, and so I'd be spreading myself a little bit too thin, but I am looking at potentially branching out on Etsy and either starting a niche specific store in addition to my main store or maybe a product specific store that focuses on um, either digital downloads like printables mm. or uh, or potentially just going with a niche specific store. So I think you, once you've been on Etsy for a little while, you're in a much better position to manage more than one store. Right. As long as, uh, as long as you're comfortable managing those multiple email accounts, that's basically all it takes. Because once you know the ins and outs of the listing process and, and all of that, I, I don't think managing multiple Etsy accounts uh, is too much for, for anybody to handle. So 
I think that's probably the next direction for my print on demand business is to have more than one uh, Etsy shop. Well, I mean, you don't definitely don't need more of it because you've got a lot going on with the podcast and the YouTube channel. And it's, <laughs> it's really great to see you grow there. <clears throat> and of course, keep chatting to us. So thank you so much for doing this, Jeff. We really appreciate chatting with you. Yeah. Thanks for having me. It was fun. Welcome to Printing Profits. Hey, this is Printing Success. Crisp tips by Sarah from Wholesale Ted. And one big tip I have for you is that the most successful products that I have ever created have been when I have asked myself, okay, what products out there don't exist that I would like to buy. Or when I ask myself, okay, what products do exist but that I would like a different or better version of, and then I go and I create that product that I want. Because the truth is, is that the most successful products are usually not copies of products, instead they are products that fill a gap in the market. But finding a gap to fill can be pretty challenging, can't it? And so that is why it is much easier to find gaps in a market where you yourself are also a customer. You can think about what products that you would like that don't exist, and then you can go and you can create them. This is Printing Profits. Some people follow, some people lead, but the best people spot trends, which is why this segment is for you. This people is trend spotting. Now, having spoken to a lot of seriously successful POD people so far on this program, I've noticed a lot, they're all really different, but I've noticed a couple things that they have in common. And one of those things is that they're all people who make great use of their time. So what tools or trends are out there that are going to help you make the best use of every sacred minute that you put into your print on demand story? Well, the one that everyone is talking about is AI, especially ChatGPT. Now look, there's a lot of hype around this, both positive and negative, and we're definitely gonna have to wait and see whether this really is the start of the apocalypse or not, but for now, I found it to be a really great tool. For me, the greatest use is when I'm stuck for an idea, and let's face it, we're all searching for great ideas, whether they're for designs, descriptions, products, or slogans. Now, I've spent years of my life coming up with creative ideas, but there are times where those just don't flow. Now, recently I've opened up ChatGPT and typed something like, give me five great ideas for a piece on print on demand trends. And I'll be honest, three of those ideas that ChatGPT comes back with will often suck, but the other two can be worth exploring and refining and boom, the creative process has been kickstarted and we're creating content again. So rather than spending hours staring at a blank screen, searching for ideas, Give AI a chance to get you started. Now, I don't think that it can be more creative than a human, but it can help you get there. But be careful because sometimes it goes down, like right now when I'm trying to find a cool closing to this segment. And uh, oh man, what am I supposed to say? Come on, ChatGPT, oh, down for maintenance. Great, perfect timing. Well, um, bye for now, I guess. Thanks for listening to Printing Profits. We'd like to thank Jeff for sharing his experience with us and at the same time, introduce you to the talented team behind this program. Executive producer, Laura Gelvite, Associate producer, Anita Njoki. Technical and video production, Emil Yasuns and Valerius Zerlechno. Sound production, Christos Hartmanis. And I'm Tyler Suffer. See you next time.